Hi, it's Jacqueline or Galacticat, and welcome back to my finally up to date Zodicat series. So I'm finally back on track with my Zodicats, and today I'll be doing Cancer. Before I start blabbering on, I want to wish a very happy birthday to two special cancers in my life. Happy birthday to Beck and to Amber. So I was kind of worried about how I would incorporate the star sign of a crab into a zodiac cat. And my original idea was actually completely different to this one. I was playing around with maybe having something like a crown with crab claws or maybe having it sitting facing backwards. So having like a crab shell on its back or something ridiculous like that but in the end when I sat down to do the initial sketch of this this is what came out I honestly didn't plan to do the crab tail or anything like that I just sat down started drawing and this was the result I actually used a reference photo of my cat rolling around on the carpet so that's where this pose came from I also added some little whiskers that kind of resemble maybe crab legs or something like that. But when I look at it, I think of Dr. Shrunk from Animal Crossing. If you ever played some of the older Animal Crossing games, here's the little axolotl. And I think it's actually really adorable. But yeah, I always think of him when I see it. For the background, I decided to break slightly away from my usual galaxy and add a kind of dynamic water splash effect. I do add stars to it at the end though, so I still have that element of the kind of galaxy cosmic type of vibes. So I didn't want to stray too far away from that, but I really like how dynamic this is and the movement that it brings to the piece. If you've been watching from episode one or you've seen a few of the other episodes, you pretty much know my process by now. Do the initial sketch, use my Sharpie pen to do the outline, and then I go in with watercolor. I decided to use this pinky salmon color that I mixed up using my Senlier paints and my Winsor & Newton Permanent Rose. And I lay a light layer of that down as the base and then darken it as I need to for the shadows to create depth. I also thought that this colour would be a nice contrast to the blue that I was planning to use in the background for the water. As usual, I just layer and layer and layer until I get the level of depth that I need and the colour saturation that I want. Speaking of which, I'm actually using a different type of paper than what I'm used to at the moment. So I usually use a medium tooth more rough paper, but this one is the um, Archer's Smooth paper. Yeah, I don't know if it's really suited to what I do. I like it, but I feel like it absorbs a lot of the color, which is kind of weird. Basically, it took me a lot longer to get the level of saturation that I wanted, and I didn't really expect that. I do like how smooth the paint goes on and how you can blend things out pretty seamlessly with this, but I think I do still prefer the medium tooth paper. Although I suppose that it might be just a matter of practicing on this new paper rather than making assumptions after one piece. But that's just my initial thoughts.
Okay, after layering and layering and layering and getting the level of saturation that I want, I went in with this splatter technique using gouache paint, which I have never used before and I bought on the weekend, so I wanted to give it a go. I wanted to bring kind of like a sea corally kind of vibe to the painting and I feel like this did it really well. I used a mix of yellow splatters and pink splatters and I really like the effect of when it dries. I also use gouache a bit later on in the background, but you'll see how when that comes up. I just finished the cat off with little details such as the nose, the paws and the eyes. Well, actually just, just one eye. There's only one eye. <laughs> So to prep for my background, I use the same technique as what I usually do with my galaxies and I put wet water, <laughs> water is wet, is water wet? Anyway, I put water down and make this surface wet and go in with the paints over the top so they bleed into one another. I use varying shades of blues and greens to get the kind of color gradient that I want. And because I'm loving that salt technique lately, I do go in at the end and put some salt to create that kind of splotchy effect. Once that layer is dry and I've taken all the salt off, I go in to create a more watery style effect with some darker blue and some loose brush lines. This is not a style that I usually do or I'm very used to, but I really like the effect that it gave. I'd love to use this technique in other pieces as well because I really enjoyed the looseness of it and just the freedom of kind of going wherever my paintbrush wanted me to. Now I go in with the gouache and I really think that this sets off the piece. I love that it's kind of transparent but not transparent at the same time. And I, I just, I love this medium. I love using it with the watercolor because when it dries and you can kind of see the blue behind it, it just, ugh, the effect that it, it gave, I was pretty, I was pretty impressed with myself on this one. I also like the fact that I can cover up areas without it being pure white. So I do kind of struggle with leaving blank spaces in my art and I tend to muddy things up if I go over them a bit too much and I use quite a lot of water and I have quite a loose style. So this was a good way to put back in that white without it being pure white. 
and without me having to leave the blank space for it. Similarly to how I did in my Taurus Zodicat, I go in and put the Constellation of Cancer on this kitty's butt. Except this time I'm using my white Posca pen instead of a gold gel pen. I use the same pen to go in to the background and add all of the stars. I kind of went a little overboard with the stars, but hey, I like stars. And after those bajillion stars are in, of course I go around the entire cat with my thicker art line texture. I always make sure to do this at the end after I've finished everything else because this is a really good texture for smudging underwater. So yeah, don't use that first. Don't ever try and put watercolor over it. It will ruin the entire piece. I know that from experience. I almost forgot to put the little cancer at the bottom, but I'm going in now and writing that so it matches with the rest of the Zodiacats. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and my schedule will be back on to a more diverse track. So stay tuned and make sure to subscribe so you see the other videos that I put out as well.